It doesn't happen all the time where every stock in an ETF, in this case regional banks, closes down in the same day. Give us a sense. What led to this big move to the downside for the regional banking sector? Right. We, we thought um, going into the last weekend with First Republic remaining an overhang, we thought um, an orderly resolution, which is what we got with J.P. Morgan, um, we thought that would be um, a clearing event for, for near-term sentiment. Uh, and what you saw on Monday was some of the banks um, actually traded better um, that you referenced in, in, the, uh, in the intro. Um, but what happened yesterday is we started to divorce ourselves again from the fundamentals, uh, and we're trading on, I think, deteriorating sentiment again. Um, and that's what br brought down some of these banks yesterday. All right. So interesting. So it's just it's just negative sentiment when it comes to the bank, because I think a lot of people thought things were stabilized, at least temporarily after that First Republic deal. So I do want to get to the fundamentals. We just had Q1 earnings for all the banks, including the regionals. What did you see when it came to Q1, uh, Q1 earnings, especially for the regionals? What's your take on the entire sector right now? So we are market weight, uh, the U.S. banks. We, we moved to that position last December. Uh, and really, um, it was a call that, that earnings had peaked. Now, um, what we've seen over the last three or four months is we've seen earnings estimates get cut by 12, 13, 14 percent on average. Uh, and that fully round trip, the earnings revisions that went higher last year. Um, this quarter, we talked about going into the prints, that it was going to be about the balance sheet, it was going to be about capital levels and liquidity. And, and the focus was there. And what we saw is the banks made a lot of progress uh, building liquidity, uh, covering the uninsured portion of the deposit base with excess liquidity. Um, but we also did see uh, downward revisions to earnings estimates. And, and certainly that's a headwind for the group. All right, let's talk about just the macro situation when it comes to banks, especially here in the United States. I want to talk about one thing. Do we just have too many banks? We've had another guest saying that in the U.S. we have more than 4,000 banks. Um, the next closest country is the U.K. It's more around like 300 or so. And then also, is short selling a factor? As you mentioned, there's just, you know, declining sentiment when it comes to this space. Are you seeing rising short interest that might be playing a part? Sure. To, to, to handle the first question, I mean, when I started at KBW 20 years ago, uh, there were 20,000 banks. And so what we, on average, do is we lose about 3 to 4 percent of the banks every year to traditional consolidation. And you're right, the U.S. banking system has far greater banks than any country in the world. Um, in terms of the short selling, um, certainly sentiment is, is pretty poor. Um, and, and I think with respect to the headwinds, it, there's, there's a hard bulk, you know, aside from valuations being inexpensive, that's a tough catalyst. We see numbers going down. And so short sellers are leaning into the group because they really don't have a catalyst aside from inexpensive valuations. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at some of these names, I'm looking at PacWest, for example, it has 18 percent short interest right now. Just give us a sense. If you see that continued elevated short interest for this for this space, what it could potentially what could it potentially mean, um, especially if we don't see any short covering? Well, you know, PacWest is trading at 35 percent of tangible books. So the market's telling you here that they're concerned about um, a, a variety of factors. I think, number one, they're concerned about the balance sheet, but they made a lot of progress in the quarter. Uh, and the stock actually rallied pretty pretty nicely after the quarter. Um, they're worried about the dividend. I would expect a dividend cut this week. Uh, that's in expectations. But in terms of overall you know, sentiment, and, um, you know, the, the group is it's pretty challenged right now. 